everyone. It's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Just as I'm talking, a picker's going by. I hear it outside. Yeah, that's a grape picker. They pick grapes all round the clock. They're trying to get them off the vines. And tonight's supposed to be, well, it's not too bad out right now, but tomorrow it's supposed to rain and be very windy then later in the day until... And then by Friday morning, it's supposed to stop being so windy about 9 o'clock in the morning. They were talking about changing trick-or-treat to a national day, which would be crazy. They were trying to even make it a... a first Saturday in October. Yeah, the first Saturday, which is, which is way early. And I think the reason they're thinking this is, well, we're supposed to have very cold weather tomorrow and rain. But you know, we've trick-or-treated in the snow before, so it's no big deal. Let the kids tough be tough and go out if they will. If their parents want them out, they'll go out. And if their parents don't want them out, they'll beg and they'll probably still go out. Our kids, when it was really bad out, what we used to do is we used to dress up and um, I like we'd have different... We have, and I would be different Jim and I would d dress up. The kids would be in their... Well, they had their costumes had their on costumes too. too. But um, we'd turn off all the lights in the house, and then we'd have like a flashlight or something, and we'd be shining it on our face to make ourselves really spooky. And um, like I would be in the bathroom, and I and I they would I'd be a witch in the bathroom, and I'd make that cackly sound, and they'd come and get their candy, and then I'd send them. I'd say, "Go to the living room, and see who's in there," and in a spooky voice. Then they'd go into the living room and they'd find out that Jim is in there and they he would have some kind of crazy something on and they he they would get candy from him and then he would say, Now maybe you go into the kitchen and you might find somebody there and I'd be maybe in the kitchen with something else on. Not I wouldn't be a witch anymore because the witch was in the bathroom. I could be just an old lady. I could or... be an old lady or just anything. I don't know. We have we have clown. We have we have a lot of that crazy stuff. And they would get their candy. So by the time the end of the night came, that bag of candy, or a couple bags of candy, they had in their own little basket. So they didn't have to go out and trick or treat. And this way they didn't go out into that terrible, cold, wet weather. And we knew everything. And they we had knew was good for what them. they had. Yeah. We didn't have to. We didn't have to take the stuff to the hospital and have it X-rayed, <laughs> like some people do. Okay, I was um, Emily was just here and she was listening to Jesus Christ Superstar, and now I've got the tunes stuck in my head. Oh, a song about try not to get worried, try not to turn on to things like that. I've got my head buzzing. I won't sing too much of it, but anyways, that song is there. Um, today I was thinking, I had a few thoughts. <laughs> One of them is, in the public bathrooms, where kids go to the bathroom, or anybody goes to the bathroom, like if you went into a public bathroom, say you went into Walmart, or any of the stores, and you have the lavatories, why is it that the door doesn't go all the way to the floor? It's a good question. Or to the ceiling. Or to the ceiling. It's like, yeah, just part way. And I was thinking about that. Well, you know, we've actually had to send when we were, um, I don't know where we were. We were camping or something. And we wanted to use the public bathroom. And the door was locked on the inside, which meant you couldn't open it. And the stall was empty. So we laid down a plastic bag and sent one of the kids underneath the door. So that's a good reason that the door is not all the way to the floor. Because if it was all the way to the floor, you wouldn't have been able to go in. And they went in and unlocked it. Then there was another time that Emily was extremely small. Extremely small. But she was a smart little girl. And we were camping. And did you know, now maybe you don't know this, but I might be, t I might be telling you something you do know. Did you know that all of the compartment, outside compartment doors on campers, they all use the same key? Well, one of the, most always, at least in the, in the times that we've camped, everybody's key fit everybody's outside door. So I'm thinking it probably, at least it did for us. So well, anyways, one of the campers 
accidentally locked her camper door and couldn't get back in. So we used our compartment key on the compartment door and sent Emily in the, the little cubby thing. She had to crawl underneath the couch, lift up their couch, and go unlock the door, which she did. And it was, and it was like really, that was eye opening to us that our keys, you know, even though you locked your camper, your camper still really wasn't safe. So all those people that leave their campers parked somewhere and in the parks are supposed to be watching them, those campers are really not safe even though they're all locked. Because if somebody wanted to, they could just um, use their little compartment key and except probably, on huh? Except on ours, I changed all of Oh, locks. except on ours, he can't because he changed them. Well, ours is secure. <laughs> But it's in the barn, so it's really secure. Well, not really. The barn door is open. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you leave them there, most likely people didn't change their locks. Their locks are probably still the same. Another thing that I was thinking about was, um, gee whiz, I covered it awfully fast. The keto? Yeah. I've had questions about why I was on keto because I'm apparently have been very thin all my life which I have but I did gain about 20 20 to 22 pounds when I went through menopause um, when I was younger I would eat like crazy I could eat anything and everything and the girls at work used to think I had two hollow legs because I could put away more than the guys could put away and I still only weighed like 97 98 pounds at the most the only time I hit a hundred was between Thanksgiving and New Year's and it was because everybody was bringing in a lot of sweets treats and I was eating some of them I didn't eat all of them because I was not a sweet eater I was real particular into what I ate because if it had to really look good and I had to be hungry and If I wasn't hungry, it didn't even look good or smell good because it smelled I could smell the sugar and if it was too sweet I didn't want it but a lot of people have asked um, about m me and keto, why I'm on it, because I really don't have any ailments either. I've been very, I'm, I'm healthy like my, my parents were, um, or at least my dad. My mom was very healthy too, but you know, my mom didn't drink coffee, so I, and she didn't drink tea. And they say that tea and coffee, in, in any research that I've done, now this could be could be yes and it could be no people can agree or disagree but they have found that people drink coffee they seem to have more cognitive um, uh, their brain doesn't go to Alzheimer's or dementia they're they have a stronger brain I don't know how to even put it <laughs> I guess I drink coffee though <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee in fact I drank I think a whole pot today mmm that's a lot of coffee but um, she didn't drink coffee or tea. She used to drink just warm water with lemon juice, which the warm water and lemon juice every morning was good because that would, that's good for your um, digestive system and good way to start your day. But she did end up with Alzheimer's and dementia in her 80s and it progressively got worse by the time she was almost 90. Um, she didn't, she had no clue who my daughter was. She didn't know my granddaughter though, the one, the little Abigail. She knew, and she used to call her Abba Baby. But she knew who Abba Baby was, but she didn't know who this other lady was. And I said, that's my daughter, and she didn't recognize my daughter. She didn't know her. But she did know me, and she knew Abby. And the other kids, she used to just love children, so it didn't matter who they were, as long as they were just there. And she could hold them and kiss them and hug them and whatever she loved little kids um, but anyways the reason I went on keto was basically my husband's family had a history of diabetes and heart disease and you know I didn't want my husband to have these ailments so I was always looking for something to be healthier than healthy always always interested in that and did a lot of research and a lot of looking around and I was always watching things and exercising and
things on that. Anything that was going to make me healthier or anybody that I cared about healthier too, I researched that and would dabble in it. But the ketogenic way has been the one that has really caught my eye because it's it's helped a lot of people with a lot of ailments, a lot of things that were considered um, irreversible. Yeah, irreversible. Yes, that's the word I should was looking for. Thank you. So, um, like even people with cancers, a lot of times they would be um, in remission or or maybe disappear. So that's why I went on keto, and it helped my husband get off of his blood pressure medicine, and he's no longer pre-diabetic. And it has helped me to maintain my weight because you know when you when you get to a certain age, it just seems like your your metabolism just slows down. It's like a blink of an eye. And every year on my birthday, I would measure myself, and every year. I would see, like my, my thighs were the thing that used to really bug me because I used to have really pretty legs. I really liked my legs at one time. In fact, one time we were walking to um, going shopping and it was, I was, I think it might have been after church or something. We were going to a store and we were walking and I could see the reflection of some lady's legs in the window. And I commented to my husband, I says, man, she's got pretty legs. And when I looked up and it was like, oh my goodness, those are my legs. So I did have nice legs. And um, and he says, I still do. I don't th I don't have nice legs. Um, but uh, the, the thigh is what I used to measure. And my thighs were getting to the point where I felt they were too big and I it was harder and harder to buy, buy pants. And so when jeggings came along, that was perfect because your leg could be almost any size and it still fit in the pant. But it's bad in a way too because um, you, can, you can keep expanding and never realize that you're expanding because the pants will expand too and they let you fit. So I don't know, I got off topic kind of. The reason I went on to keto was for health. I wanted everybody around me to be healthy and I wanted to be ex as healthy as I could be. Now, my parents, when as they were getting older, I noticed that they were eating less and less. They weren't eating pasta like they used to. They weren't eating potatoes like they used to. They weren't eating beans like they used to. They were eating a lot of eggs, fish, and meat. They were going more towards that. So they were, and cheese, they ate a lot of cheese. And every meal my father would have, now like they say you should have a small glass of, of wine well, in Italy, everybody had wine, but here he was not a wine drinker. So they used to have the, which we, on keto, you shouldn't have it. But they had, that was their, it was for the flavonoids, I think is why they were drinking it. They would have the, the purple grape juice. They'd have a small glass, a very small. It was like, the glasses were like this big. It was considered a juice glass. It was like four ounces, and they probably had three ounces of, of grape juice with their with their meal and that's what they would have to drink instead of a glass of wine they had their little grape juice and my dad also now this is something he did and I think it was because he got up so darn early and went out to work in the on the farm he would come in at about 11 o'clock and he used to have a half a cup of coffee and two cookies or a piece of pound cake it was um, just a small piece, just enough to to um, have like a little treat, I guess. And then he'd go back out and he wouldn't come back in until it was time for him to have his lunch or his, or, um, yeah, usually lunch he would come back in. He always had, they had, they ate, they ate the three meals a day. They really did. But breakfast was um, later in the day and then he had coffee. I remember my mother not liking that because when I would get up, I was never hungry in the morning, never hungry. I didn't want to eat breakfast. In fact, to eat breakfast, I would always be gagging, just thinking about eating breakfast. And she would, she would sit there and give it to you so that you would, she would make sure you ate it because I really didn't want to eat it. And I remember on um, Sundays, this, she was always concerned about our skin. 
um, to make sure we had healthy skin and uh, complexions were going to be good. So every Sunday, now this is something that you probably can't eat on keto either, but every Sunday we had apricots because apricots had the vitamin A and so we would have a little dish of apricots and I used to hate apricots. I really didn't like them but I used to eat them just to get them gone and that would be the end of that. <clears throat> but we and we used to make eggnogs. The people today don't eat, don't make eggnog like we made eggnog. We used to take the egg and the raw egg and put it right into the milk with a little bit of um, vanilla. Sometimes we'd put a little orange juice in, but not usually. Just a little vanilla, milk, and a raw egg, and then put it in the blender and whisk it up, and it was it was very good. And once in a while, honey might be added. See, these are things that you're not allowed to have on keto, but because we were young, um, our bodies could, could, um, we could handle, handle it. Whereas my nose is itching, you know, my stars. <laughs> I have to itch my nose. Oh my goodness, it's been itching the whole time I've been talking. And I try to ignore it, thinking it'll go away, but it doesn't want to go away. It just keeps coming at me. Speaking of noses, I haven't what? had a cold. I have not had a cold cold. You haven't had a cold in in the probably. Year. Yeah, almost two years. probably because of the way you're eating. Yeah, and I I don't have I don't get colds either. Um, in fact, the girls that when I was working, the girls at work would always be sick, or the kids would be sick. Somebody was always sick, and we I used to just say chalk it up to well. I probably had every strain strain that was out there, so that's probably why I don't get sick. But it's probably because of how we eat. And that probably has helped us not get ill. Let me watch. I better knock on wood. You know, I didn't know what knock on wood meant. I better knock on wood. I'll knock on the other part. Knock, knock. Oh, my dog will bark. I better stop. <laughs> yeah. He'll think somebody's here. If he's, I think his hearing's going, though. I really do. I don't know where he is. Is he in his house or is he no, he's he's sleeping on his bed. little bed? Okay. He, um, I think he's, I think he's getting hard of hearing, but I didn't know what knock on wood meant. When I was younger, my godmother gave me a necklace and it was a hunk of wood and on the little wood was a little gold plaque like thing in there that said knock on wood. And I thought, what the heck is, what this is, it's a nice necklace, but I don't know what it is. It kind of, it was kind of odd for me to, I thought. But as years have gone by, I realized knock on wood is just to, to so that you don't jinx yourself. And um, so that's what knock on wood meant, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I'm sure everybody out there knew it, huh? It's a superstition. It's a superstition. And apparently, I'm pretty superstitious at some things, because although there's some things I'm not superstitious about, I will walk under a ladder, even though they say that uh, you shouldn't walk under a ladder. I will walk under a ladder. But if I can avoid it, I don't walk under it. But if I can't avoid it, I'll go under it. It's okay. And I don't know. And the black cats don't bother me. I have a black cat. I used to, I had read somewhere or heard somewhere or something that it's not the black cat that's bad, it's the white cat. You know, you don't see many white cats, but you do see a lot of black cats. It used to be at one time black cats were scarce and um, all of our cats were orange seem like orange and white or calico orange white and black or brown whatever color it was it was a three three color and that was the female always the female cats are three colored at least they used to always be and the two colored ones were were the boys and so we used to have orange cats i'm just going on and on and on and on uh, did you follow this it was um starting with the bathroom doors why are they only half door I think it's I think it's a cheaper way to go and it helps you to see if somebody's behind the door and it helps the person that's in the bathroom see the feet walking back and forth and so they don't dilly dally and take forever in there plus it could help with um, the stink because <laughs> the, the um, if you if you do your business the air can circulate and it 
just permeates all the way out and disappears. And it's not as, as bad. It could be really bad if it was a closed a door. Pungent. It wouldn't be as pungent. Although they have that little spray that you could... Poop spray? What I don't know what it's called. Poopery, poop, poopery. I think it's called. You can actually spray that in the toilet before you do your business, and it's supposed to eliminate the smell. I do have a bottle of that. I got it as a, a white elephant um, gift when I was working. It's in my bathroom. It's probably been used a little, but not a lot. It's just there. So, I guess that's. It for today. I hope you enjoyed this little chat of everything under the sun and of the song of try not to get worried, try not to turn on to things that upset you. Oh, I won't go anymore. But anyways, it's a good song. It's from Jesus Christ Superstar if you really want to hear it. Um, I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.